the seven, the seven words of Jesus Christ on the cross. I think the first one that you all will remember, you can write it down. My Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. You can write down Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23, verse 34. And I say the first thing that we see through the cross is forgiveness. Forgiveness. The key word, forgiveness. That what is what God wants to give unto us. Father wanted to open the way for us to come to him. And because Jesus was faithful to fulfill the dream of the Father, he gave himself in his blood. And in that prayer, he prayed for you and me. It was our sins that took him there. Hello? And that you know that Jesus looked at you. And he said, Father, forgive him. Father, forgive her. Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they do without even going to God, offered unto us forgiveness. It's there. It's already there. The question is, will, will I take it for my life? Will you take it for your life, the forgiveness that God has already given you through his blood? Question is blood. That is what you need to do if you are struggling to take your forgiveness. For what happened wrong in your life, You say, I don't know how to forgive myself. I don't know how to forgive others. I don't know how to take God's forgiveness. If you respect the blood, you take your forgiveness. Amen. Is that good? You take that? Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. The second point. Oh, you can go with a A, B, C, D, E, F. F. Forgiveness. Second one, future. Through the cross, it's not just forgiveness that we have, but we have a future. Did Jesus not say to the sinner next to him, Today you will be with me. Today you will be with me in paradise. Hello. And to you, my brother and my sister, today, God wants to say, based on how you respond to him, Jesus is saying, today you will be with me. Where? Where? That's the question. As that man came to Christ, gave his life to Christ, so even today maybe with certain facets in your life, you want to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me for this, or God, help me with this in my future. Help me in all these facets of my life. A lot of things that need to change, a lot of things that I trust you for breakthroughs. And God says, today you will be with me in your work. Today you will be with me in your relationships, in your future. May that be the most awesome blessing that you can see through the cross for your future. God will be there. But it's, it's more than that. It is you will be with him. In your future. I say, well, I, God, I don't want to be in a future. I don't want to see tomorrow if you're not first there. Where I can be with you in this coming week. Where I can be there where you are. You are in the place of love. You are in the place of forgiveness. You are in the place of having faith. Having the wisdom in that situation that I must deal with. You are my provider there. And I want to be there where my provider is. I want to be there where my wisdom is. And my wisdom is you. You are my wisdom. And God's giving you through the cross of Christ. I believe. Giving you that promise. You will be with me. You will be with me. Let it be so in Jesus name.
Amen. Is it not even with Matthew 28, 20? Even in the Great Commission, when God said, Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them, teach them to obey all that I've commanded you. And see, and see, I am with you. I am with you till the end of the age. My brother, my sister, God is with us. God is in you. God is over you. God is with you. But there's a way that God wants to manifest himself when you go and make the disciples, baptize them, let them identify with Christ. That's in baptism. Teach them. Don't go and condemn people. But bring them the truth that can set them free. When you go and teach people, the scripture there says, teach them so that they can know a lot. No. Teach them to obey. When you get into the word, after you finish with the word tonight, after this morning, you must know how to obey God more. And more effectively. Teach them to obey. Not teach them so that they know a lot. But teach them to obey. And when I will do that, when you will do that, God says, you will see me in a different way. See, I'm with you. See, I'm with you. Till the end of the age. There's a seeing that you will get into, that I will get into when I walk more into my future, into my destiny, into my work, into my workplace, there where I study, there where I am. There's something more that God wants to reveal to me about who he is in that place. If I'm willing to walk with him into my destiny. Today you will be with me. Let's just say that. Today I will be with God. Because he promised that. That guy, he messed up man, big time. He's at the end of his life. It's a few, it's a few minutes, then he's gone. And just the moment that he really surrendered with genuineness, with genuineness to God. God said, you will be with me. Tomorrow, for what God has planned for you, what he dreamt for you to have or to, to be or to do. Tomorrow you can walk in it. Even if you've messed up up till now. Your whole life. You've messed up everything and you come into today. And you say, God, here I am. God says, tomorrow. You will be where I am. Let it be so. Take that promise for every area of your life. That in that area, tomorrow, you will see God first before you will make a decision. You will not make a decision based on fear. Based on fed upness. Based on frustration. You will not make a decision based on success. You will make the decision because you know God is already there and he is going to speak. Any amen? Okay. There's forgiveness, there's a future. Now the third one has to do, I want to use the word findable. You can find God. God makes himself findable. There's really such a word. God is findable. And even when the enemy would want to come in condemnation, say, how, how can you go back? How can you say sorry for the 20th time and think that their forgiveness is going to work? God is findable. The moment you reach out to him. Somebody used that illustration once. Uh, the furthest you can be away from God is so far. Because it is the furthest that you can push him away. The moment you reach out to him, he's going to be there. I can push God away. But he will not go away. He will be there. Right there. We will not walk in this way together. But, and I can push God away in my finance because I, I push the fear in. I bring the fear. I'm walking with a fear. But where I'm walking with this fear, or I'm walking with this stress, or I'm walking with... The moment I reach out to God, He will be there. He will not move one meter further away. He will be there. Are you with me? Thank you. He will always be findable. 
Why? You find this, Matthew 27, 46. In the words where Jesus said, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why did you forsake me? So that me and you will never, ever, ever be forsaken. He was forsaken so that through the cross, through even those words, confirming that the father forsook, is that the right word? His son. He said it so that you and I will know that we will never ever have to say that because it will never ever be true. It was true for the son who took all the blame, all the sin on him. And in that words, whenever you could feel alone, ever could feel forsaken, just remember it's absolutely not possible. It's not possible. Because there was one that was totally forsaken by God. And that was on the cross. And it was confirmed in his words. And those words was not because Jesus was confused. But because he wanted you to know what the Father did there. So that you will remember you will never be forsaken by God. Amen. Are you with me? We have a finable God, and my flesh must be dealt with, but God is always findable. You will always be able to find him. Doesn't matter what rubbish you got involved in. Doesn't matter your, your what's the right word, your stature, your, yeah. What you've done right, what you've done wrong. You will always be able to find him again. It will always be possible through the cross. Amen. Let's say it's always possible to find God. Okay. So if his name is Putin, if his name is your mother-in-law, no. <laughs> you, not she, she's already with the Lord. You will always be able to find the Lord. <laughs> to get your heart right. Yeah. May God have mercy on us. Amen. Forgiveness, future, findable. That was Hebrews 13 verse 5. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hello? Matthew 7, 7. Ask and keep on asking. That's verse 8 actually. When you ask, it will be given. When you seek, you will find. When you knock, it will be opened. For the one who ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. We'll find. But will you keep on? Not because you nag, but because you know. Let's say, I will not nag, but I know. God will answer. God will open. God will show. Not necessarily the answer that I want. Not necessarily the door that I like on what is on the other side. But he's always there. To come into communion with you. To have communion with you. Amen. Are you with me? Forgiveness. Future. Findable. Number four. Family. Family. You're part of family and even hanging on the cross. He's organizing the family. Sunday is your mother. Mother, there's your son. He told his, old, his own mother. Jesus is in family business. Hello. Jesus and his father and the Holy Spirit, they are in a family business. And if your business, of your, the business of your life, does not involve the family of God, it's not God's business. So whatever business you are involved with, the, the busyness, if you can say like that even, the busyness of your life, if it doesn't bring the family closer to one another, God's family, huh, first of all. And your life does not bring family to God and God to family. God 
revealed as a father of a family. Hello? Then what are you doing? What are you busy with? So may through the cross we also see that Jesus is in family business. Let's say I am in the family business. What you do has an impact on brothers and sisters, children, people around you. When you stand accurately, then your prayer is accurately. Then your prayer has impact in, can have impact in so many people's lives. When I'm consumed with myself and I'm just having my pity party and, and I have an issue with someone, man, and there's an issue with someone, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can Sorry, not three. <laughs> and I, I, I just have this issue with this man. You are in what business? I am in some other demonic business. For the demons to profit. For hell to profit. Hello? For the world to profit. To make profit from my life. But if I am in family business, then it's obvious forgiveness will be there. Because I honor God's family. Because God is involved with family. God is in a family business. And that business, first of all, has to do with forgiveness, has to do with grace, has to do with respect, has to do with the dream of the Father. So the dream of the Father is that me and Stefan, we must have a good relationship. I keep my issue with Stefan. I don't respect the Father's dream. I don't respect the Father's business. You sort your life out with your family, with your friends, with whoever you are able, as far as possible, live in peace with everyone around you, the word says. Hello? So when you sort out the stuff with your family, it's because you respect the father's business. Not because that guy is wrong and you are right, and that guy thinks that you are wrong, but you are not wrong, you are actually right. Okay, at the end of the day, Look at the cross and be involved with your father's business. And that is through forgiveness, he has a desire for family. The new heaven, the new heaven that God dreamt about is called family. Hello. The nations, he will dwell among the nations. And that will be heaven. The heaven that Father dreamt about. For God so loved the world that he dreamt about. Not the world, what we see. Not the havoc that we see out there. Not the destruction. Not what we see, how what people can do to one another. For no apparent, real, logical reason. How people can blow up one another and do the most horrific stuff to one another. How can that be? That God loved that world? No. God loves... His original dream world that he dreamt about. That he gave his son so that that dream world of him as the father of the nations and the children enjoying one another, respecting one another. Well, that what God intended family to be and the nations to be and that is a family. I will be their God and they will be my people. God died for a people. God died for a family. God gave himself for family. Hello? Be in your father's business. And respect family because you respect your father's business. And you are in his business. So then you, it's not your business to find out if I'm right and he's wrong. Or Stefan is right and I'm wrong. That's impossible. But, uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying, what is, what is all about in our father's business that there's reconciliation. And even, you know, you won't believe it. The testimony of the blood is especially there. When it was, there was a hell of a lot of issues. And you know, they could just get over it. That's the testimony of the blood. That's the testimony of the blood. That the blood was more important than my issue. Let it be so. For you, let it be so for me. In Jesus' name. The cross is about forgiveness, 
Second one was future. Finable. We have a finable God for family. Number five, fountain. Through God, we have a fountain of life. In our prayer, it becomes a fountain. Jesus said, I thirst. He was talking about water, but come on, what was it at the end of the day all about? I mean, he was in the process of dying. Why must he have something to drink now before he will go and die? Uh, that's just a simple question. But all of that, all that I can say is, so that you will never thirst, because when you drink from him, when you drink from him, you will never, ever, ever thirst. There was a time that he thirsted, and he would have wanted from the wells of the Holy Spirit the freshness, and but he were not allowed. Because at that moment, God looked away. But so that forever, forever, you will have the fountain of life inside of you. John 4, even. Hey, eh? Everyone that will drink from me, they will never thirst, and they will never die. John 4. John 4. You have it. So when you remember that, those words from Jesus on the cross, I thirst. God says, if there's any thirst, blessed are you if you hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are you when you are thirsty for the word and for more of God. You will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake. For the place of standing before God, righteousness, right before God. There in your place where you are right before God, I have a hunger to stand before the Lord. I have a thirst, I have a desire to stand and to live before the Lord. That's righteousness. Living before your Lord. Never ever will you go thirsty. As you walk with him, walk with the word, walk, walk in prayer. The scripture says in John 4, and the water that I will give them will become, it will become. You remember we talked about, we talked about that? The water will become a fountain of life. It will become a fountain. It will not necessarily. People will always have to give you water like this. If you cannot get into the, into the word and into prayer. But the more you get into prayer and into the word, the water in you becomes a fountain. It becomes a fountain. It's not automatically a fountain. A fountain, it will not be there. If you not allow it to become a fountain. What do you do with the living water? What do you do with the freshness that God gives you? No, the freshness is not there. It must be there. So that when you open your mouth, when you pray, so that when you speak, freshness can come out. Water that can bring life. That there's life in your, in your, in your walk. There's life in your words. There's life in your relating. There's life. Because the fountain of living water is inside. Because you allowed it to become a, a dynamo. Is that the right word? That it live bring. So it's not just, I live on your prayer. Yes, I must. We must carry one another's burdens. I need your prayer, your prayer. Your, you need other people's prayer. God organized it. That you will not be able to do it on your own. Because God said, carry one another's burdens. The body of Christ will care for one another. That's the way it will be. That's the way it must be. Is it not here? But please, my brother, so when, when you are thirsty, drink from the water of life, yes. But don't. Don't then sit back and do nothing. Drink from the living water. And with the living water that you have, start to pray. Start to get into the wet, so that with the living water, it changes in a fountain. That the living water changes into a fountain. That through your life, you are giving living water. Living water. And even, you know, people could taste the living water and turn their back on Christ. They tasted the living water when Jesus walked on earth. They tasted the healings. They tasted the deliverance. They tasted the words. 
they saw that he is good. They saw his love. They saw his actions. They tasted. But it didn't become anything in them. It didn't, at the end of the day, had any impact permanently on their lives. We're not going to have the living water as a, a drive through you know, McDonald's drive through You say, oh, and I go for a little bit of living water, and then I carry on, just so that I survive. And my prayer life is so that I can just survive. And if there's a crisis, I go drive through for living water. If there's a situation, drive through for living water. Somewhere, somewhere, you need to show who he is. And he is the living water. And he creates that fountain in you. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a world out there and they are thirsty for the Lord, but they don't even know it. They don't even know why they are in that place of dryness in the desert. Because they need the Lord. And you need to go and give them the living water. How? By praying for them. Praying for, for the guys in Russia, Ukraine, and wherever in the world. And whatever guys are going through. You need to hear Holy Spirit. When, where, and for what. You need to pray. And it will, become, it will come more naturally in a natural way. That you will understand a prayer life with God. As was met Makar. Fountain, number six. There's seven, eh? Finality. There's forgiveness. There's a future. You have a finable God. There's a family. There's a fountain in you through the Holy Spirit. And there's a finality about a few things. When it's just, this is final. When God, when Jesus said it is finished. It is finished. They had to do with certain, a certain finality. This thing is settled. It is settled that when you believe, you will be saved. It is settled that when you forgive, forgiveness will flow. It is settled that you, when you take the truth, you will be set free. It is settled that he will never leave you, never forsake you. It is settled. But do you believe that it is settled? When you pray something and when you deal with something, do you believe it is settled with this chamors of the past is not going to come back and haunt me anymore. In Jesus' name. It is settled I will not fear anymore. It is settled I will not be anxious. But I will put my desires before the Lord in prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. So that his peace that surpasses all understanding will protect my mind and my heart. Amen. So how much of your life in your prayer, in the word, in your relationships, is settled. It is settled, my covenant with that people, those people. It is settled in my family. This is, this is it. It's not tomorrow we can think of divorce, or tomorrow we can think of taking our heart away. Taking your heart away from your brother or your sister. It all depends on their reaction. It all depends if they hurt you. It all depends if they disappoint you it is settled there's a finality in your covenant with God and there's a finality when you speak the word you bring finality into situations you bring a settling of things that must happen in what how you believe in how you react in how you speak and what you speak may God help you may God help me when Jesus said this was complete, it was complete, it was settled. Finality. And the last one, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I com commit my spirit. That's Luke 23, 46. Sorry, previous one you can write down with finality. It is finished. John 19, verse 30. John 19, verse 30. It is finished. But Luke 23, verse 46. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. I've written there freedom. There's forgiveness. There's a future. There's a finable God. You have a family. There's a fountain through the Holy Spirit in you. There's a finality through the word in your life with certain decisions that you make. And there's a freedom. And you know the biggest freedom is that you can surrender to God. That is your biggest freedom. Freedom is not to do certain stuffies. 
The biggest freedom is that you have the freedom to relate to a living God. You have the freedom. Hello? To be in his presence. You have the freedom to come and bring what you have in your life and put this before God and say, God, speak to me about this. And God is speaking to you. You have a freedom like the father and the child. The child has certain privileges, certain freedom with his father. Because why? Because he is a child. And through the cross, there's this awesome privilege. When they say this freedom is the privilege that you have. You have the privilege to be free. To do what? To use prayer as something. No, to have prayer. Prayer is, in your, your communication with God is like the ultimate. Prayer is not, first of all, a key for something. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer is a privilege and there's a freedom to have an excellent prayer time with God. Because it's a communication the guy in the world cannot have. It's a communication that the devils cannot have. It's a communication that the angels in heaven cannot have. That prayer life of you, the angels cannot in heaven. The billions of angels cannot have. That's an awesome, awesome, awesome privilege that you have at the end of the day. That you can commit your ways, your life, your future into his hands. What an awesome privilege. Amen. God, come and set us free. Thank you for the cross. Lord, and that we will boast in nothing else, in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, God, I pray for every man, woman here that may be struggling to forgive themselves or struggling to forgive somebody else. I pray that right now that they will look at the blood. Right now they will choose that the, they will respect the blood and that the impact of the blood is greater than the impact of their own sin or the sin that somebody committed to them, Lord. God, I pray that we will walk out here as men and women that will respect the blood and therefore take forgiveness and give forgiveness. Thank you, secondly, Father, that we have boldness to have a future. We have a future because you are going to be there. God, if you're not in our future, we don't want to go there. If you are not in tomorrow, we don't want it tomorrow, Lord. But I can face tomorrow because you are there. And thank you, Father. You are excited about our futures. Every future that is represented here. Because you have a dream for every man, every woman sitting here, Lord. I pray that you open it up for them. I pray that every man, woman here will see with excitement what you have for them. And even if we don't see that we know the hopeful plans. Plans to give us a hopeful future. That's in your heart. And that's why we can be excited when you say that we will be with you in tomorrow. We will be with you in the next month. Help us then to see where you are with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are always findable. God, that, that it can be very disappointing things that we've done, and choices we made, but still you believe in us. Still you love us. Still you have grace for us. Still you will stand and look at us. When we speak to you, you will turn your face towards us, Lord. Thank you for your awesome grace that you will never leave us, never forsake us. Help us never to leave the faith, never to forsake the intimate love relationship with you. Help us not to walk away from an intimate love relationship with you, Lord. And walking away through circumstances, through temptations, through focusing on emotions and focusing on others, Lord, more than focusing on you. Thank you, Father, that you are always findable. And God, here we are as your family. Help us to live your dream by living family. 
to be part of a family, but to, but to enjoy family. God, and many of us being hurt by family, many of us being hurt and disappointed, I pray that you will bring the healing, please, Lord. Bring the healing through the cross. Bring your healing, Lord. So that family can love one another, appreciate one another. Not point the finger at one another. You didn't call us to judge because when we judge, we will be judged. And we bring a curse first into our own lives in future. No, God, we are not there to point fingers. We are there to say thank you and appreciate family in spite of mistakes. And by giving grace, we have the opportunity to receive grace as we sow grace to one another. Thank you that in the context of family, we will find our future with you. And as a family, this morning even, as we pray here, the impact is through this family. Thank you, Lord, for the fountain of life. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in us. Oh, and as we pray, you create this fountain. That wherever we we go and what we pray, what we say, that there will be freshness. We need that, Lord, and every man, woman in this place also that need that freshness. I pray, Lord, that they will understand what to do with the living water that you have given them. They will know what to do with prayer. They will not go under the yoke of the, the religious system of prayer. Not I, I'm supposed to pray. Not the law of prayer. Not the must of prayer but the desire and the privilege to pray. And that freshness will be created more and more, and the fountain will be established in their spirit and in their hearts. For every man, every woman here, in Jesus' name, we pray that freshness. God, help us to bring a finality to certain facets in our lives, Lord. That we will not fall back into rejection. We will not fall back into fear and anxiety, and stress and no. Thank you, Father, that through the blood of Christ, in the name of Jesus, it is final that we have our breakthrough. We have overcome, for greater are you living in us than the one in the world. We are able. We will believe the word. We will believe nothing else except your word, Lord. We will have no other gods before you. We will love you and worship you. We will set our hearts on you, Lord. We choose that. We will not use your name in vain. We choose that this morning and that this will be quality decisions. That we will love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, all our mind, with everything, Lord. And so we will love others as we love ourselves with your love. That is settled. That is our faith. That's what we believe. It's final. Like you said, it is finished. It is final. What we pray now, what we say now, what we believe now, this is the final, 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 final word. Thank you that the power and the authority in all of that is because you said it is finished. And thank you, my God, that we have the honor to have the freedom to surrender our lives to you as children of the living God. That we have the freedom to say, into your hands, into your hands, into your hands, our Father, into your hands, Jesus, our Master, King, Lord, and Savior. We surrender our lives. Thank you that we have that freedom in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's just sing that last verse of that old chorus. I surrender all I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all.